Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Miss Earth Crown page. Again, this is another episode of our MEC live interviews for Miss Earth 2020. By the way, my name is Noy Sabilan and I am the chief correspondent of Miss Earth Crown. And for tonight, here in the Philippines and in other parts of the world, I think it's good, it's good morning, we're going to have one of our special Echo Angel guests for Miss Earth 2020. And I'm going to be joined by my co-host and our online correspondent for tonight, Emmanuel Feliciano. Eman! Hi, Noy! Good evening, where we are right now. Good evening, everyone, and good morning to the rest of uh, the world. I am Emmanuel, and I will be, this time, I will be your correspondent. I will be your live correspondent. So I'm in charge of reading your shout-out requests and later on your questions. So please, whenever we give you the cue, please do your shout-out requests, your comments, and then later on, we are going to ask you to ask questions to our special guest for tonight. Okay, so that's for me right now. Back to you, Noy. Thank you, Eman. And of course, this is now the perfect time to introduce our extra special guest for our special episode of Miss Earth's Miss Earth Crown's live interviews, the beautiful, the stunning Miss Earth, U.S. Virgin Islands, ladies and gentlemen, Isabella Bennett. Hi, Isabella. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in with us today. For those of you who are joining us from the U.S. Virgin Islands and the United States, good morning. For those of you joining us from other parts of the world, good evening. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to sit down with us. There. Again, Isabella, we'd like to first say thank you for embracing our MEC live interviews for today. Mm -hmm. And we are loving the background right now. Um, that is true. Yes. Thank First, you. I got it very specifically for this interview. I had a solid color and I decided that we needed something a bit more floral because it is Miss Earth after all. Yes, you look perfect. It, it looks really amazing. First, we'd like to ask, how is Isabella Bennett right now? How is uh, everything going so far for you? I'm doing great. It is very early here. I have been up since 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the United States to get ready for this interview. But overall, things are going very well. I just ended my summer classes for the semester. I'm beginning my preparations for Miss Earth. So things are very, very well right now. Great. Great to hear that, Isabella. And we would like to say thank you for gracing our live stream for today so early in the morning for you right there <laughs> to those to you for waking up so early i know that you prepared way early for this live interview so thank you very much for doing that for, for that's us. that's right thank you so much isabella thank you for now, having me yes now before we begin our conversation with our extra special echo angel guest for tonight i would like to turn it over to emma for the reading of our initial Facebook live fan comments and shout outs. Emma, do we have anything on our live stream right now? Yes, actually, um, we have a very personal cheer, shout out, cheer from our Miss Earth Ground family. They say, go, 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 the hosts are ready. Well, <laughs> obviously, we are not the only ones who are ready because Isabella is so ready for this one. <laughs> and also, we have another comment from Edison Fernando Bernardo. I'll say that in my Edison. accent. Fernando Bernardo. So he's he says, hello, Queen Isabella Brie Bennett. Amazing. Yes, so that's there. actually my full name. Um, so my mm -hmm. middle name is Brie. So fun fact about Edison, when I first competed at Miss Rhode Island, Earth USA, um, Edison was my very first fan from the Philippines to connect with me. So he's kind of Amazing. followed my journey. So it's very special that he's tuning in right now. Amazing. Thank you very much for well, thank you very much, Edison, for that. Okay, so keep your shout-outs and your comments coming, and we are going to read them in a bit. Back to you, Noy. Well, thank you, Emma. So again, for all of the fans tuning in right now, please reserve your questions for our Echo Angel guests for tonight later on because we're going to have the perfect opportunity for you to have your questions answered by Isabella live during our live stream. But then for now, we're going to start off with one of our signature MEC segments, okay? And this is what we call the MEC segment, Fact or Fiction. There, okay. So 
this is sort of a segment that will um, try to discover Isabella on a personal level. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to show Isabella a couple of statements and Isabella will have to say if the statement is either fact or fiction. Okay, so Isabella, are you ready for the first MEC challenge for today? Yes, I am very ready. Great, okay, so let's have the first fact or fiction statement. Okay, Isabella, fact or fiction? You have competed at another national pageant before becoming Miss Earth U.S. Virgin Islands. Is it fact or fiction? That is a fact. So I actually competed oh. at Miss Earth USA for three years prior to being appointed the title of Miss Earth U.S. Virgin Islands. Mm. Okay, so I previously held and the title of Rhode Island. Oh, sorry. I previously held the title of Rhode Island, which is my home state, and then I held the title of Miss New England, which is a region in the United States for two years. Yeah. So since you since you mentioned that you have joined the Miss Earth USA for three years, can we can we say that Miss Earth and being a Miss Earth delegate to the international pageant has been a long term goal for you? Uh, it's more than just a long-term goal. It's been a dream of mine for a very long time. I always said that when I first found the Miss Earth USA system and Miss Earth in general, that I found my forever family in pageantry, that there was no other system out there for me, that this was it. Wow. Uh, yeah, that, that's, a really, that, that's a really great story. And um, Isabel, I'd like to do a follow-up on that. So again, since you mentioned that you have um, competed and participated and you have represented the different states of the United States, um, how did you become or how were you appointed as U.S. Virgin Islands? How, um, what was the process? I mean... So after Nationals last year of Miss Earth USA, I decided that it was time for me to kind of move on and explore different options in pageantry. So I had signed up for another national pageant and that plan fell through. So then I signed up for a state pageant and that plan fell through because of COVID-19. So I decided it was a sign from the universe that I needed to wait before entering into another pageant. So I had posted an inquiry on Facebook and Instagram asking my friends whether or not I should attempt to compete in another state pageant or wait a, bit, a little bit longer to see what else happened. And Talitha White, Miss Earth US Virgin Islands 2019, responded to that saying, no, don't do it. And that's all she said. And then very soon after I heard from Kaylee, who was Miss Earth US Virgin Islands 2017, offering me the title. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, so I think Isabella is still there, Emma? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so again, um, maybe um, what you mentioned as a story about your joining of like Mr. USA for several years, it's like a testament to like the the saying that if you have a dream, you will have to go for it no matter what happens, right? And then right now you exactly. have your, your crown as Miss Earth Virgin Islands. And now you're going to participate and represent um, U.S. Virgin Islands in the Miss Earth 2020 pageant. So congratulations for that, Isabella. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. I firmly believe that everything happens for a reason and that my decision to leave Miss Earth USA and explore other options is what led me to this point in time. Yeah, that's great. And that's really um, great to know, Isabella, and congratulations on that. Okay, now let's have our second fact or fiction statement. Okay. Second fact or fiction, Isabella, are you proudly biracial that is a fact i am there. actually nine different nationalities um so in no particular order i am african-american irish scottish portuguese polish dutch french and native american and english <laughs> so it's, it's more than by being biracial i think you are multiracial if that's the case yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes okay uh, i would like to follow up on that um isabella how is it like living with different cultures being exposed to different cultures and how was that um able to like enrich your life um as a person and as an individual so it was a very interesting dynamic growing up because you are exposed to so many different things and for a while it took me 
some time to figure out how exactly I fit uh, into my different sides of my family. So on my African-American side of the family, I have the lightest skin out of all of my cousins. And so it was kind of hard to identify when I was really, really young. And then on the flip side, I was always tanner than all of my cousins on the other side of the family. So it was kind of hard to identify with them. Um, so I think around the age of six or seven is really when I came into my own and embraced the fact that I have this beautiful family on both sides and that I am a very unique and special person uh, and that my culture and my heritage is something to be proud of. Correct, yes. And I think um, it's going to be a known fact that your like exposure to the different cultures, it's going to be a great tool for you when you compete at Miss Earth 2020, most especially in terms of like um, advancing your, your advocacy um, to many people, um, to many people around the world, I think you'll be able to do that perfectly well because of your exposure to to the different cultures that you have in your family, right? There, okay, okay. Now let's have our next fact or fiction statement. There, okay. This one, I was able to um get this from your Instagram, okay. But then I'd like to confirm. Fact or fiction, are you a big 90s baby, Isabella? Yes, I was born in 1995, so that makes me a 90s baby, directly halfway through the decade. That is so nice. Yes, yes. And um, exactly what made you say that you are a 90s baby? I mean, growing up, what were what was Isabella Bennett like? Um, what were the things that you like to do? What was the kind of music that you like to listen to? Tell us more about that. So I think the advantage of growing up in the mid 90s is that you really had the best of both worlds. You had the emerging technology, but you also still had this strong connection to nature. Like I was outside every single day as a kid. And then I'd come home and fall asleep watching TV, whereas like the earlier generations didn't quite have that. It was more focused on being outside. Whereas the newer generation had a strong focus on this new technology, whereas 90s babies had a little bit of both. Yes, actually, I, I agree with that. And I think Eman can also share a little bit later. Also here in the Philippines, I mean, just the just the experience of like playing outside with mm -hmm. no cameras at home, mm -hmm. you are better compelled to like meet your friends outside and enjoy the, the sunlight every day. And that is something that I really um, treasure as someone lived up uh, who had lived during the 90s era right Eman? maybe you can make do a follow-up yeah i agree with that that is something that um a lot of um, young people are uh, kids are missing right now but uh, that mm -hmm. we enjoyed when we were young in the 90s so playing outside and being able to physically interact with um, our playmates and with other people it's something to treasure Right. Yes, so there's actually a large movement right now of parents across the globe who are limiting their children's screen time to try to reconnect them to nature and being outside and having that same experience that we had, which I just think is so important and so valuable to a child's development. That is amazing. Perfect. Yeah, a lot of that, that movement should be more popular around the world. Yes. Right. Thank you all so much. All of our fans who are 90s babies as well, hi to you, 90s babies represent. <laughs> okay, there. Let's have now our next fact or fiction statement. Fact or fiction. Okay, this one's really interesting. You work as an actor. Isabella, fact or fiction? That is a fact. Wow. I worked, prior to COVID, I worked full time as an actress on movies and television shows that shot on the East Coast of the United States. I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, which is our largest acting union. So most recently, the project that I worked on, it's actually coming out in a few days. I worked on The Sleepover on Netflix, which releases August 31st. You won't actually see me in it. So most of my job as an actor is doing stand-in work. So what that means is that I am approximately the same height and hair color and look as another actor, one of the principal actors. So when they are framing up a shot before they shoot, rather than having the actor stand there for an extended period of time, they have them back in hair and makeup getting ready and I stand where they stand so that they can frame up the shot correctly. And then when it's time to shoot, I step out and the principal actor steps, steps in. I've actually met a lot of really 
really interesting people doing that. So it's been very fun and I'm very fortunate. Wow. That is amazing. Actually, Eman right here is also a theater actor, right? Mm -hmm. Eman. So exciting. Yeah. Actually, I was going to say I was able to do some stand in jobs as well in, in the past. So I totally. Right. With what you did, with, with, with what you do, yeah. And it's a very good opportunity to meet amazing people, so I agree. It is, and it's funny. I actually just sort of fell into it. So I grew up in theater acting. I did my first play when I was about seven years old, and I kept acting ever since. I was involved with my high school's theater troupe. I did some regional stuff. And then I had taken a break to travel the world working for an international science conference organization. And when I came back, when I started school, a friend had said, you have to sign up for this page that is a free casting website. And I was like, okay, sure, why not? And the very next day I booked my first job. So it was absolutely incredible. Okay. That is I would like to nice. follow up on that. Um, on you being an actor, yeah. On you being an actor, Isabella. Um, first, do, do you still have a dream role? as an actor that's number one and number two do you have like a dream co-actor someone that you have um that you dream of like really working with in the future dream role as an actor let me think about that i know i'm a little young but i would love to play auntie mame in a production of auntie mame um it was a play and a movie from the 1950s that was just fantastic and that I grew up watching with my mother and my grandmother and it's about this crazy aunt who adopts um her ne her nephew and they go on this wild adventure so that's like a dream role someday I'm a little too young right now but in the future that is definitely a goal as for an actor that I would like to work with that's a good question probably Chris Evans so there was a show that shot in New England that I unfortunately Abel wasn't wasn't able to work on. It was called Defending Jacob. And so all of my friends got to meet him and work on this project with him. And because of the fact that I was traveling for work, I wasn't able to participate. So hopefully I get the opportunity to do that in the future uh, because I feel like I missed out a little bit. Chris Evans, yeah. <laughs> Emma, um, I would like to ask you now regarding um, this background of Isabella, like being an mm -hmm. actor, um, what do you think is going to be her advantage, like having this performance and acting experience as she competes at the Miss Earth 2020. What do you think is going to be the advantage? You know what? Um, pageantry is also, also involves a great deal of performance because though you come in as yourself, right? Because it's you know, pageantry right now is also all about being authentic. Though you come in as yourself, there is also a certain degree of theatrics in pageantry because you have to present yourself in a certain way that is pleasant, that is approachable, that is charming, that is, you, uh, you know, so you have to be able to internalize that role. So it's, I feel like it's, it's like 10% preparation and a 90% performance, you know? So definitely if you have an acting background, if you have a performance background, you are going to nail a lot of rounds, a lot of um, categories and um, activities in, in a beauty pageant. So you have a great advantage, Isabella, I think. Thank you. I definitely agree that it is a good preparation when competing in a pageant. It's actually funny. So when I first started competing in pageants, the reason I got involved is because I was very comfortable being on stage as a character. I was very comfortable stepping into the role of someone else on stage in a play. And I wanted to be comfortable on stage as me, as Isabella. So pageantry was a way for me to do that. Right, that's true. That's true. And now we have another thing to watch out for um, about Isabella. Number one, her stint at Miss Earth 2020. That's number one. And number two, her acting career. So we're going to watch out for <laughs> right. the one on Netflix. We're going to promote that. <laughs> we'll see. Whenever there's uh, the same um, characteristics as, as her, we, uh, we're, I'm going to think, oh, this, is, well, this was probably who Isabella was standing in for. <laughs> yes. Okay, there. And I think we have one more fact or fiction statement. So again, we have we're able to know Isabella on a personal level now. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about something about 
It's something about her crown. So fact or fiction, Isabella, the crown you are wearing right now is similar to another country's crown. Fact or fiction? That is a fact. So this crown is actually the same crown that Miss Earth Argentina 2019 wore. It's not the same exact crown, meaning I have her crown, but it's the same design and by the same person who created her crown. Wow. Amazing. So this is your Miss Earth US Virgin Islands crown, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. It's also and very exciting because it means that somewhere else in the world, a sister queen has had a similar crown as mine. And I think that's just really special. That's the kind of special connection that I wasn't expecting uh, when my first crown first shipped out to me, but it was a pleasant surprise. Yes. And I think when uh, when you get to see Miss Earth Argentina 2020, you have a conversation starter. Okay, I, yes. I have to see. <laughs> that is right. That is. Yes, yes, there. So again, thank you for sharing that um, fun fact about your crown, Isabella. And thank you for answering our fact or fiction statements and questions. Thank you very much for doing that. Now, before we moving on to our next segment in our interview, I'd like to ask Eman to um, read a couple of our questions FB live comments and shout outs from our fans. Yeah. Hey, Thank you for asking me to do that, um, Noy, because it, our comment section is popping right now. <laughs> we have wow. a lot of um, comments and chat out requests. And one of them is from Jerio Matthew Choi McClive. I like your, your McClive. Go, Isabella. Way to go from Miss Earth. Love from Cebu, Philippines. There Thank you. you Paul. And another one is Kathy. Kathy. Ponsuelo from, um, I, I don't know where Kathy is from. Um, she says, hello, Isabella. And she has another comment. She says, you look stunning. Love that crown. Thank you so much. Right. So Kathy, now you know some background about um, Isabella's crown. And our perennial and consistent um, viewer, yeah, Migs Pelaez, yes, says, nice background, Isabella. It is Thank true. Thank you. There you go. Hi, Migs. Thank you for always um, watching with us. Okay. Migs has a question, but um, we'll have to reserve your question for later. Okay. Actually, there are already a lot of questions right now. Okay. And there's a comment from the owner and the president of Miss Earth Crown. Hi, Glenn Tristan. Okay. Amazing. Queen Isabella is an actress. Can't wait to watch you. Yes, we are all actually waiting um for your acting project so whenever you have you please share it with us so we can absolutely share it. thank you so much glenn right and another our um graphic artist from miss earth brown charles ben is saying well-spoken queen she <laughs> is indeed a well-spoken queen thank you for that charles ben okay so that is our comments and shout outs for now noi some of the questions i will be reserving for later back to you noi air so again um you're I'm, I'm going to be on the lookout for your Netflix series. I'm actually looking at it right now. I'm going to that uh, in is the amazing. future. But then for now, we're going to talk about um, the different experiences of our special um, Echo Angel guests for tonight. Okay, And we're going to do that through pictures. Through our mm -hmm. signature MEC segment called Picture Perfect. Okay, so what we go, what, what we're going to do tonight is we have actually scanned and um, we have actually stalked sort of this <laughs> account, and we have chosen some photos. Okay, some photos, and we're going to show the photos on screen right now, and Isabella will have to tell the story behind the photos. Okay, mm -hmm. so again, Isabella, our apologies for some of the photos. <laughs> <laughs> of the photos but then are you ready for the picture perfect segment yes amazing let's have okay. our first photo emma there so this was from miss earth usa 2018 2018 because my hair was very very short then i actually chopped it all off right before the competition uh, so this was the swimsuit round. Fun fact about this photo, to get that glow on my legs that you can kind of see, I'm actually using cooking spray as like a body oil. Mm. It just shines very nicely under stage lights and that's probably the weirdest pageant thing that I do. 
that's a good um, pro tip though. Yeah. I was actually taught it by another competitor the year before who was a bodybuilder. So she competed in bodybuilding competitions. And apparently that's a thing they do all the time. So it's a trick that I kind of stuck in my back pocket. That's right. Amazing. And maybe Isabella, you can share a little bit about your other co uh, your other co contestants, like co, um, co candidates um, at Miss or QSA. Because I think you are good friends with one of our former guests at MEC, um, Angel Strong from Nebraska, right? Maybe can yes. Like so I adore Angel. Them. She is such a sweetheart. We actually competed together the year before this. My very first year at Miss Earth USA, she won the Junior Miss title, uh, which was very exciting for her. And the following year, I ended up judging that pageant for Miss Earth USA. Angel is such a sweetheart. She's actually the very first person that I did an interview with after being crowned. And I was so excited to see her make it into the top 10 during Miss Earth USA's prelim or final competition this year. <laughs> yes. Actually, Asian is um, one of our one of our favorite guests from Miss Earth USA because, she, again, she's really a sweetheart number one. And mm -hmm. I think um, with a young age like hers, I think she's already really advocating and she really knows um, what she wants to do with her advocacy, right? Um, a really Absolutely. Great yes. Okay. Thank you for sharing that story behind that first photo. Let's have our next picture perfect photo. This one. Okay. So nice. This one is actually one of my favorites. Uh, so in my spare time, I cosplay, uh, which is costume play at different fan conventions and anime conventions and comic cons. So this one was from Boston Comic Con. I want to say last year or the year before. So I am dressed up as Captain Planet who was mm -hmm. one of my favorite superheroes from the 90s based on the TV show, Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Yes. We love that show. <laughs> it's a we great love. show. <laughs> I think it was very important to me as a child. I think it very much helped to shape my views on the environment. So I'm very thankful that programming like that existed. Uh, also a quick shout out to my brother for taking this picture. So I drag my brother to all of these conventions and he absolutely hates taking photos because we'll stand there and I'll change my poses like ever so slightly and he gets so annoyed and he was like so embarrassed the fact that he was dressed like a normal person and I was dressed like Captain Planet walking down the hallway with him. <laughs> yes, actually um, this is one of the photos that really popped out, uh, really popped out of your Instagram feed because all of the other photos were like glam shots and whatnot but then this one is like the photo with like bright red outfit and like bright green <laughs> color hair so you cannot so miss that photo and out yes <laughs> and thank you for sharing that story behind that captain planet photo really really right. fun there next photo right now for our picture perfect segment is this one there this you is the first laugh. photo I officially took as Miss Earth US Virgin Island. So this was actually shot in my living room. I set up this same kind of studio that I have set up right now with my lights and my camera. And I had a friend come over and we took probably close to a thousand photos and we narrowed it down to a few really, really good ones. So Miss Rhode Island Earth USA, Allie Curtis, when she was Miss Rhode Island America had taken a shot with the USA flag that I just thought was beautiful and it really stuck with me. And so when I first found out that I had been awarded the title, I knew that this was a picture that I wanted and needed to take. Yes, yes, of course. Again, this is a very be beautiful photo, um, Isabella. I'd like to ask, what was your initial reaction? What was your very first reaction after hearing the news that you are officially the Miss Earth USA Virgin Islands? I feel like I did what any pageant girl would do when they win a title. I immediately started to cry. I was sitting on my couch, scrolling through Instagram when I heard from Kaylee, and I just broke down into tears. And my family was like, what's going on? What's happening? And I was like, no, no, they're good tears. I promise. They're happy tears. So that was the initial reaction. And then after that, it was a bit of shock that set in. Like, I kept having to, like, refresh the page to be like, did this actually just happen? Like, is this real life? Because it really is a dream come true for me. Wow. That a, that's a, a really amazing thing for you to share, um, Isabella. And again, we cannot wait for you to start your journey officially as the candidate of U.S. Virgin Islands at Miss Earth 2020. All right. That is next photo right now. Let's have our next picture perfect photo. This one. Quite interesting. Yes. So I love a good suit. I love 
what's considered typical men's fashion for women. Knitted ties are one of my favorite things on the planet. This photo was taken at the Rhode Island Infrastructure Summit. They were having a panel on climate change. And whenever there's something related to climate change going on in my state, I want to be involved. So I attended this infrastructure summit, which infrastructure isn't something I was super familiar with. But it's important to push yourself outside of your comfort zone when there are conversations happening that you want to be a part of. Amazing. Yes, yes. Maybe, Emma, you can give your reaction to this photo. I mean, um, what is one thing that you um, have seen in Isabella's personality after seeing that photo? You are simply, a, uh, Isabella is simply a go-getter. You know, it's like every opportunity to hone and express um, your talents and interests, you take it. And that is amazing. Like, you know, this one, this is this conference, like one moment you are in a cosplay being your performer for performance self and mm -hmm. then the next time you are in a conference um learning about infrastructure and the envi and its relation to the environment so that is just amazing exactly thank I, I you i think it's really important to pursue all of your passions as if they were a career there's nothing wrong with professional development for your hobbies that is true that is true yes and it goes to so hmm. how multi multifaceted isabella bennett is as and individuals. So again, exactly. she has like different personalities, like different sides to her, and it's a really great thing for us to know about that right now. Right. Thank you, Isabella. You know, sometimes we we have no idea where our hobbies or passion will take us. You know, and then it's look at where it's taking you right now. So, thank you very much. That is very inspiring. It's actually taken me so much further than that. So mm -hmm. my hobby and my passion of advocating for the environment turned into what's going to be my future career. I ended up back in school studying disaster relief, specifically emergency management and homeland security. And that is because of all of the volunteer work that I have done. Amazing, see, another wow. amazing practice. And speaking amazing. of Eman, of mm -hmm. her environmental uh, advocacy, I think the next photo is related, greatly, re greatly connected with that. Mm. This there is you go. our last photo. Maybe you can tell us the story behind these photos from your Instagram, Isabella. So all of these pictures were taken before or during different rallies and demonstrations that I attended. I think environmental policy is very important and the best way to be an advocate for our planet is to get out there and have conversations with people and to really try to influence policymakers so that our laws reflect the things that we want. So the first one, up in the, for me, it's the left-hand corner. Um, mm -hmm. It says, I stand with the last generation who can alter the course of climate change before it's too late. So that was during the youth climate strike. I was out in California for that one. Uh, and that one was a youth-led movement. Actually, several of these were a youth-led movement um, demanding climate justice. The one next to that, our planet is on fire. It's time we stop pretending it's not a problem, drop everything and roll out new policies to combat the climate crisis. So mm -hmm. at the time during that one, I thought I was going to study fire science uh, before switching to a degree in emergency management. So I thought it was just a cute play on words because in the United States, when you are on fire, you are taught you are supposed to stop, drop and roll. So I thought that was pretty cute, cute, clever sign there. Uh, very the very corner. Facts do not cease to exist exist because they are ignored. Change the politics, not the climate, refers to the fact that here in the United States, climate change is viewed as a political issue rather than a matter of fact. And mm -hmm. that's something that isn't the case in a lot of other parts of the world. And it's something that we really need to change because it's science, not a matter of opinion. And then that last one there is very important and something I have advocated for for a very long time. It says the ocean is not for sale, say no to offshore drilling. So there are so many amazing opportunities out there with wind and solar and water energy that our need for fossil fuels and our dependency on it isn't healthy for our planet and it isn't healthy for us, especially right. because drilling offshore leads to oil spills, which is incredibly harmful to the marine ecosystems in the surrounding area and can actually impact the oceans all around the world. So saying no to offshore drilling and focusing on renewable energy is an incredibly important thing that we have to advocate for. That is true. And we cannot agree more yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, especially right now. Well, we are in need of um, renewable sources of energy in order mm -hmm. for us to sustain um, our planet 
properly. So thank you very much. Those are all very nice um, signboard uh, um, cards. Yeah, that really put out a great message. Right, Noi? Yes. yes, exactly. And that actually ends our picture perfect segment. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to use that last photo that we showed you, um, Isabel, <laughs> to segue to something that um, something that will be a launch pad to our discussion of your environmental advocacy. So what we asked Isabella to do is we asked her to create another signboard. Okay, this time something that will show her advocacy as an echo angel to Miss Earth 2020. So Isabella, maybe you can show your first signboard now to the fans and, up and up there. have and an here. extensive discussion about that. So my signboard says planet critical climate change education. Combating Earth's Greatest Affliction, which is my platform for this year. So my advocacy is all about climate change education and really getting out there in the community and having meaningful conversations about the impacts of climate change in order to inspire people to action. Wow. That is amazing, right? Yeah. Planet critical climate change education. It's very Correct. important to create. Yes, it's very important to create conversations around this topic. And the fact that you are advocating for it and the fact that you are um, using your, the available platforms in order to advocate for it and to encourage people to have that discussion and to have that awareness is very, very important, very, very timely and very much needed. So thank you very much for um, putting you. forward that. So that name actually stems from the idea that our planet is currently in a critical condition. And when a person is in a critical condition in the hospital, we do everything we can to help them. However, we are not currently doing everything we can to help our planet, even though our planet is sick. So that's where that idea of planet critical comes from. The situation is critical. Our planet is in a critical position and we need to take critical action in order to help. That is true. We cannot agree more. Right, Noi? Noi? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a little lag um, on Noi's part. Yeah. I'd like yes. So I'd like to do a follow up on that. Um, your planet critical climate change education. Have you started specific projects to advance your advocacy? The planet critical. Maybe you can share a little yes. bit about your efforts. So I, in 2017, I was personally trained by Vice President Al Gore as a member of the Climate Reality Leadership Corps, which is a nonprofit organization that provides training and education to members of different communities in the world to get out there and really advocate for our planet and help influence environmental policy. So in 2017, I completed that training. And from there, I organized several rallies and demonstrations in my state. I've participated in other events across other states. And then very recently in July, I was asked to be a mentor at the first ever global virtual training for climate realities. So I actually had my own group of high school students. There was 17 of them who I helped mentor through the process and am continuing to mentor now that the training is over on how to be a better advocate for our planet. And I'm actually planning on being a mentor at the next training, which is coming up at the end of the month. So with education, I think it's important to acknowledge that there are so many different resources and opportunities out there that are available to the public for free. And I think spreading that information about those opportunities and different things you can do at no cost to yourself is really important. Yes, we agree with that. Again, um, actually, Isabel, we, uh, we weren't able to uh, mention this. Um, Emma and I are both teachers and um, we we cannot really, yes, we cannot underscore um, more than enough the importance of education in terms right. of like advancing like, like causes and most especially for this younger generation, because again, they're the ones um, they're the ones who are, who are going to inherit the planet that we have right now. And I think it's very crucial and critical for us to do our part in ensuring that the younger generation is going to do their part in saving right. uh, planet Earth for their other generation, the, the uh, upcoming generation. Exactly. exactly. I think teachers are such an influential part of the way that children learn. You guys are really the pillar to their understanding of how this world works. So having teachers like you out there 
who genuinely care about the planet and its health is incredible. Thank you so much. That is why is it, it that is why it's important that you mention that there are free resources out there where mm -hmm. people can educate themselves and get involved. And both students and teachers, especially in a digital age that we like we have right now, can actually use that. Thank you. Yes, yes. Now, um, I'd like to segue on another question. Um, after discussing your advocacy, Isabella, now I'd, um, I would like to ask regarding the climate or the environmental, uh, environmental situation in U.S. Virgin Islands. Maybe you can share and describe a little bit what is exactly happening in U.S. Virgin Islands in terms of the environmental like, landscape right now. So there's a lot going on currently in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and it all stems from climate change. Every year, they are ravaged by hurricane year after year after year, and hurricanes are a side effect of climate change. Natural disasters occur, occur more frequently because of global warming than they would if man-made climate change didn't exist. So we're really having a severe impact. We're creating climate refugees. There were areas of the Virgin Islands that were completely destroyed by these hurricanes. Additionally, ocean acidification is a serious problem that's related to climate change, and that leads to mass bleaching of the coral reefs. Mm. Yeah, okay. And again, um, speaking of like environmental policies, again, you have mentioned environmental policies um, all throughout our discussion. I know that the U.S. elections are coming up, right? Yes. The U.S. elections are coming up. And uh, I think I know for a fact that the U.S. Virgin Islands is not really don't have the privilege to uh, elect the president of the United States. I think you are only no, allowed. No, unfortunately, they do not get a vote because they are a territory. Yes, mm -hmm. but then as a whole, like generally speaking, um, Isabella, maybe you can um, describe or discuss the importance of the power of voting of elections in terms of like protecting the environment. Maybe what is your standpoint on that? How important is it for voters, generally speaking, to know about the the stand or the perspective of politicians who are running for public office? It is arguably the most important thing you can do to advocate for our planet. We the people have the power if we get out there in masses and really attempt to make change. Do your research look up the candidates who are running for public office, understand what their platform is and what they are going to do for our environment. Talk to your representatives, talk to your senators, talk to anyone and everyone who is willing to listen in order to figure out what is the best course of action for you as a voter to protect our planet. That is a really strong statement. We uh, couldn't agree more um, with you, um, Isabella, because again, around the world, um, we are in desperate need of leaders who are going to take us further in our fight against climate change. Again, if you don't have leaders who are are actually like deniers or non-believers in climate change, then it's going to be a, a very difficult battle to um to um to have or to to fight in terms of climate actions. And again, as a Miss Earth U.S. Virgin Islands, I think you are in the perfect position to influence people to really go out there and vote for mm -hmm. the perfect politician or the perfect like um the perfect um public officials are going to create environmental policies um that are going to uh, affect or affect um great change in the environment nowadays exactly so really quickly i want to acknowledge the fact that a lot of people don't register to vote because they say that they don't like either of the candidates but the best way that i can explain this to you is it's not about picking the candidate who's perfect, because frankly, a perfect politician doesn't exist. It's about picking a candidate who is going to get us closer to the goals that we all agree on, closer to our goals of environmental justice and stronger laws and policies that support that. Yes. And of course, now we're not going to ask who you're going to vote for. OK, that's a, that's a really hot, hot button topic right now. But then I mm -hmm. hope those who are watching right now can take a cue from what Isabella said about the power of voting or the power of the elections. Thank you, Isabella, for sharing that um, standpoint um, about the elections. Now, we're now going to talk about your bid for the Miss Earth 2020 crown, okay? And of course, this has been um, a hot button topic, not only um, within the circle of the Earthlings, the Miss Earth fans, but it's also it also has been a hot button topic among pageant fans around the world. 
which is the virtual staging of Miss Earth 2020. Now, as a candidate who is going to compete this year, what is your opinion about the virtual staging of Miss Earth 2020? I personally think that it was a very bold and brave decision on the Miss Earth organization's part to continue on with their plans for the 2020 pageant. It really shows that this pageant is about so much more than just a crown or looking beautiful. When you strip away the lights, when you strip away the stage, when you strip away really the glamour of competing in an international pageant, what you're left with is the mission. And it's a mission that all of the delegates firmly believe in. It's our mission that our organization promotes. And it's a mission that we're so passionate about that we're not going to let a pandemic stop us. We are going to continue to advocate for the environment and continue to push through with this pageant against all odds. And now, Isabella, if you're going to have like a direct, a direct message to all of the Miss Earth fans right now who are actually kind of tentative, who are, who are not really still sure if they are for it or, or, or against it, what is your message for them? Um, those who are not really 100% into the virtual staging of Miss Earth 2020. My message to all of our fans out there who aren't sure how exactly this is going to work or how exactly they feel about this is that it is still an amazing opportunity for all of the delegates, that it is still the same organization that you love and support, trying to adapt to the times, trying to make something wonderful happen out of a situation that isn't ideal. It's providing a source of entertainment and a source of hope in a way to all of the people who are stuck at home, who are afraid that bad things are happening to the environment while they can't get out there and actually advocate for the planet because they're at home quarantining or something along those lines. So it's really a message of we're overcoming all of the obstacles and a part of the reason we're doing it is for all of you. So we hope that you enjoy what we're doing. We hope that you continue to support us and we are excited to see how this groundbreaking pageant turns out. Exactly. Again, the word there, the key word there is groundbreaking. I'm going to allow Emma to share his uh, viewpoint on this. But then personally, I think um, the fans should see it in the perspective that this is a true testament to the, re to the resilience and adaptability of the organization. During, I mean, this is a true um, testament to um, how creative and inventive the organization is and how committed they are in terms of like advancing the cause of Miss Earth and the Miss Earth organization. I mean, a pandemic is not something that's going to stop this right. year and to give these girls a platform to talk about and relay the message about environmental protection. And I think that's something that the fans should focus on rather than the um, rather than the lack of the glitz and the glamour because it's, it's a virtual pageant, right? I think that's something that they need to like, refocus or readjust their their um, value system on, right, Emma? Mm -hmm. What is your take? That's right. Um, I agree. The organization itself um, gave a statement and it says that um, the advocacy does not stop just because there is a pandemic. In fact, all the more we need awareness right now, you know, and it's like postponing the pageant entirely in 2021 will get rid of that opportunity to continuously and consistently advocate for the environment. And we have the perfect opportunity right now because everything's going virtual, everything's going online. And with the Echo Angels from around the world, we will still be able to see a lot of action, a lot of advocating um, in different places all over the world. And that is a lot of awareness that is created, even though we are all at home and we can't really go out and we can't really deliver a live pageant. So um, the, the, a lot of fans, a lot of people who are against uh, the virtual edition are the ones who want to see the, the, the candidates on stage in their gowns and their swimsuits. But we have repeatedly said that at this point, we are in a different situation. We are in a new normal. So we have to adapt to the times. And this is a great way of doing it. Yes, exactly. And to all of our fans right now, if you have any opinions or comments about what we are talking about, feel free to um, put them down in the comment section and we're going to flash them, read them. But please, we um, um, request um, to the fans, please put your comments um, out of love for the organization. Right. Okay? Yeah. Out of love for the organization. No bashing. I mean, no negativity. I mean, all of these are for the love of our beloved Miss Earth 2020, right? right. Speaking of 
now is the perfect time, Emmanuel, to read and answer some of our Facebook Live questions. Right. There you go. Before we before we go on um, reading some of the questions, let's look at some of the comments also. There you go. Um, we have here Michelle and Constantino of Pageant Hub. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, she says, hello, beautiful Queen Isabella and the two awesome hosts. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yes, there you go. And also our um, see, uh, our oh, um, Miss Earth Crown president says, I love Linka. Yes, we all do. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. And uh, again, Migs also says, she's a well-spoken person. She knows what she's talking about. We, yeah, definitely. And uh, good luck to you, Isabella. Can't wait to see you on the virtual stage of Miss Earth 2020. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Kathy says, you are really nice to listen to and you're very spontaneous and we agree. There you go. And Angel is actually watching and Hi, she Angel. said, well Hello. said, Bella. Yeah. Hi, Angel. Thank you so much for watching. So those are some of the comments. And now we will go to um, the questions. Okay. There you go. And uh, did I hear, just hear some music in my background? I don't know. In, in my, <laughs> I, I feel like I heard some trombones playing. Okay, so how are you preparing for the virtual pageant? We just talked about the virtual pageant. So um, let's have a question from Migs. How are you preparing for the virtual pageant of Miss Earth 2020? It's a lot of trying to get everything organized. So it's finding a videographer and finding a photographer who's willing to work with the tight schedule that we're on. It's making sure all of my wardrobe has been ordered and has time to get here because shipping delays because of COVID-19 have created a serious, serious problem when it comes to international shipping and getting things from other countries. So it's a lot of figuring out what works locally and supporting local businesses to make sure that I look phenomenal on stage for all of you. Um, additionally, I've done a lot of interview prep. I'm continuing to do a lot of interview prep to really get myself in the best mindset I can be to know with, with full confidence that I can go out there and represent everything that the U.S. Virgin Island stands for. Thank you so much for answering that question. It's actually very nice that you're also thinking local. And speaking of phenomenal, you right now, you are already looking phenomenal. So Thank well, you. how you will look in the virtual pageant because right now, you're already looking like a queen. So thank, thank you, Larry. Thank you so much. Right. And thank you, Migs, for that question. Okay. And um, Jerio Matthew McClive, I really love your surname. Um, this joining Miss Earth, is joining Miss Earth for you more relevant than other international pageants? Or maybe we can rephrase that question. What made you choose Miss Earth um, above other opportunities and other pageants? I have always been an environmental advocate ever since I was a small child. I became a vegetarian when I was four years old because I decided that animal cruelty was wrong. I've always participated in beach cleanups and park cleanups. It's really just been a way of life for me and I'm very thankful that my parents introduced me to these concepts at some young age. Miss Earth for me is just a representation of everything that I'm doing in my personal life and getting to take those ideas and those values and share them with the world. Amazing, yeah, definitely. So, Miss Earth is oh, Miss Earth is also lucky to have you. Also, we have a question, but we already answered this. We just want to show the question. Kathy Ponsuelo, would you like to share us about your advocacy? So, I hope I know you are watching, Kathy and um, Isabella already shared about her advocacy. So, that oh, that question was already answered. There you go. Um, we have some question, a question from our Miss Earth Ground staff. Um, what are the characteristics of an ideal leader for you who advocates for the environment? I think you already touched on this um, a while back, yeah. a while ago, but um, if there is more, if there's some more specific characteristics of a leader that focuses on the environment that you are looking for, what would they be? I think a leader really needs to listen to the public on what they want. And additionally, I think that they have to be very effective at communicating and very well-spoken to really deliver the message and help create change. Because when you're sitting on the other side of a negotiations table, there's gonna be a lot of things coming at you, a lot of differences of opinions, and you have to be very effective at communicating in order to get your ideas across. Amazing, yes, yes, yes. 
um, not only in environmental concerns, but also in different um, aspects of governance, is mm -hmm. very important for a leader to be able to communicate with um, his or her people, with their people. Thank you very much for answering that. Ed, since Angel is watching right now, she also has a question for you. Uh, she definitely listened to um, you talk about your advocacy. And, and so she has a follow-up question in one of those points. Can you explain the threat of ocean acidification um, what what the threat of ocean acidification is to island nations like the U.S. Virgin Islands? Ocean acidification is a serious problem because it leads to mass bleaching of the coral reefs. So essentially what that means is the coral reefs are unable to produce new coral and the coral that is existing is dying because the ocean water is getting too warm and too acidic for them to survive, which poses a serious threat to all kinds of island nations in the Caribbean that are surrounded by coral reefs. It's really a loss of biodiversity that it's threatening. So marine life is arguably the most diverse life on the planet. And there are so many species that exist only in the coral reefs that are being destroyed because of ocean acidification and these species won't be able to recover. Amazing, there you go. There you go, that explains it, Angel. And also we learned something from that. So um, to our fans too, so that is ocean acidification for you, okay? And that's something that we should also um, be aware of so that we contribute to the protection of our ocean and not contribute to ocean acidification. Thank you so much for that question, Angel. There you go. And those are our very, very um, engaging questions from our fans, from our staff, and from our friends. So thank you very much for those questions. And of course, Isabella, thank you very much for, at, for answering them, not only with grace, but also with a lot of information packed in. Thank you. Noi, back to you. Okay. Again, thank you to all of our fans who um, logged in and placed their questions and comments for our live interview tonight. But again, while we are having a lot of fun and we're learning a lot from our special guests for tonight, we will have to end our live stream really soon. But then we're not going to do that without allowing our Miss Earth Virgin Islands, Isabella Bennett, to say her final word, like a message of thanks for all of your supporters, most especially for all of the Filipino fans, because I don't know if you're aware, Filipino fans are one of the most enthusiastic fashion fans in the world. What is your message to all of them? Right. Yeah. Our Filipino fans are wonderful, and I am so thankful that you all love and support this organization as much as I do. Thank you for staying awake with me. I know it is 9 p.m. there, so thank you for staying up to engage with me and to ask really meaningful questions that gave me an opportunity to talk about my platform and talk about the importance of protecting our environment. To our fans from the United States, I am so excited to be able to share my journey with you. Uh, to my fans everywhere, I am excited to share this journey with you. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your support. If you would like to follow my journey, please visit the Miss Earth US Virgin Islands Facebook page. We also have an Instagram account by the same name. So there we'll be posting all of my, excuse me, there we will be posting all of my events that I attend, all of the appearances about my platform, about things that just relate to Miss Earth in general. So if that's something that interests you, definitely go check it out. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all of the love and support you have given me. I am so thankful uh, to really have the best fan base in the world. You guys are incredible and all of the delegates of Miss Earth are incredibly lucky. There you go, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Isabella. Again and again, thank you for sharing your time with us so early in the morning back there in the United right. States. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, in Filipino, maraming salamat, Isabella, for um, being here with us during our live interview. Now, for all of our fans, before we end the live stream, we would like to inform you that this is only the first of our many live interviews that we have in store for everyone because we have officially started, we have kicked off our special coverage of Miss Earth Crown's special coverage of the 2020 edition of Miss Earth. We have officially started right. it yesterday and this is the, the very first of our special coverage. We have a lot more in store for everyone. So in the coming weeks, on Friday, August 21, we have Miss 
Earth South Africa 2020. And on Saturday, August 22, we're going to have the newly crowned, fresh from her coronation, Miss Earth Nigeria. And mm -hmm. on August 23, it's going to be a packed weekend for us at Miss Earth Crown. August 23, we're going to have Miss Earth Finland. Okay, those are our three upcoming live interviews only here on the right. Miss Earth Crown page. Now, we will have to end the live stream again. Maraming maraming salamat to everyone. Thank you to all of our fans. And of course, thank you to our extra special guests for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the advocating, the winsome, and the multifaceted Miss Earth U.S. Virgin Islands, Isabella Bennett. Thank you thank very you much. So much. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, I just want to say something. Before we end, like... If you missed this on live, you can still catch this on our Facebook page and also on Miss Earth Ground's YouTube page as well. There. Thank you, Emma. And again, thank you to all of uh, the fans who tuned in tonight. And again, see you on our next live interviews once again on behalf of, in behalf of my co-host, Emmanuel Feliciano, and our lovely guest for tonight, Isabella Bennett. This has been Noy Sabilano for Miss Earth Crown page. Stay safe and have a great day, everyone. Maraming maraming salamat po. Bye.